What is up, Troubler Nation? I'm your host, Keller Keemstar. Let's go right into the news. If you really want the epitome of sensitivity, you gotta look toward Keemstar's Twitter videos. So I do want to clarify that I don't think Keemstar has fallen in the sense of his career. Rather, I think that his reputation significantly diminished to the point of no return. Keemstar began to build up a reputation as someone who was willing to say literally anything, which people found admirable. And it's safe to say that this is a trait he's carried on to this day. Projection. He was trying to put that on me. Damn. Hi everyone, it's me again, and Squish Gang is present. And today we are here to make a video that I have been contemplating for probably about a year now. And I've just been kind of putting off out of like fear and <laughs> not wanting to watch this many videos on somebody because we are here, as the title has shown you, to talk about the rhetoric of Daniel Keem or Keem star. As far as trigger warnings go, um, the nature of someone like Daniel Keem is we're going to have to get into a lot of topics of kind of some racist language, anti-Semitic language, derogatory nature, misogynistic nature, just a lot of unpleasant topics. So if you want to sit this one out, that's totally understandable. For this video, we're going to bring up any notable notions that I kind of think are useful for the rhetoric of Keemstar. However, there is so much history on this person and so much content that they've put out. This is not an overall history of Keemstar video, so please don't comment that I might have missed one thing here and there or whatever throughout the timeline because that's not the nature of this video. Rather, it is to point out a style of argumentation based on a pattern of behavior displayed by certain actions. But first, links, sources, Amazon wishlist, Patreon, books I recommend, social media, email, all that type of stuff. All links down below. Thank you to my patron besties. Names are on screen right now. I'm gonna break this video down possibly a little bit differently than normal. It depends on editing. It does have the same three sections as before, but depending on how long filming goes and the tangents I go on, there's a good chance that there might be just kind of separate sections within other sections, if that makes sense. We'll see when the video ends up being published. We're going to have to go through many disclaimers here because despite how small my channel is, People always make sure that my videos get back to the people that they're made on or like anybody that they that supports them or their audience or whatever. First, we're going to start with pointing out bias. I don't like Keemstar. I don't like what Keemstar stands for. I don't like what a lot of the commentary community behind Keemstar necessarily stands for. I don't like the mental gymnastics that people do to support certain claims from Keemstar. If you're going through this video with this whole moral high ground about how somebody should never talk about something they have a bias against. I have two things to say to that. One, my supposed bias comes from the actions that Keemstar himself has done. My disdain towards this person comes from things that they themselves have done, not a general opinion that I'm supposedly supposed to share. I am a person who can make my own judgments based on what somebody does. Not every single judgment that someone has ever made is only influenced by what other people have told them to think. And I'm calling this bias for when the so-called logical commentators try to come and present blatant biases against Keemstar's opposition and claim to be unbiased themselves. And you know, if they're gonna try to call this video bad practice, this isn't for you. I also want to present a statement from a research paper called Critical Literacies as a Way of Being and Doing to present this kind of concept of that there is no such thing as textual neutrality. So all content creators have bias present in their content given that they are textual pieces themselves. Vivian Maria Vasquez writes the following. Texts are socially constructed from particular perspectives. They are never neutral. All texts are created from a particular perspective with the intention of conveying a particular message. Texts work to have us think and believe certain things in specific ways. As such, they work to position readers in certain ways. I also have tons of notes for this video. I'm going to be glancing down at them because I want to make sure I get every point right or as right as I could possibly find based on the context. And I'm aware that I'm bringing up sources very quickly. So I don't get into things uh, in the conclusion like this. And we'll get further into the history of Keemstar or Daniel Keem, as some of them, as some people would not know that that's his name, apparently. It'll become clear over time why I'm bringing forth a concept of bias and I'm making my intent as clear as possible, as early as possible, because of the way that Keemstar will manipulate holes in argumentation, even sometimes manipulating holes in his own argumentation as a means to be vindictive. I wanted to bring that forth as early as possible. The inspiration for this video had actually come from Keemstar's interaction with people regarding Amaranth. 
and uh, her tweets regarding the separation from her husband. It was just yet another cruel, contrarian, inflammatory response. And I just decided I'd had enough. And I wanted to like kind of put forth my opinions on this because I've kind of danced around the idea of Keemstar. I've talked about him a couple of times in regards to other scenarios, such as like the video with Trisha Paytas and um, discourse that he's had in other communities. However, I've never really sat and talked about Keemstar specifically. And when I did talk about those videos, I think they have very low view counts. They weren't like I had a thousand subscribers, if that at the time talking about that person and those uh, situations at hand. So we'll begin with a brief introduction of who Daniel Keem is. Then we'll get into the history of feuds with other creators and the nature of them. And then we're going to go through the drama alert, Twitter, recent actions, etc. So let's get right into part one. Who is Daniel Keem? Daniel Keem, or Keemstar, is the head and face of the drama alert YouTube channel, which currently sits at 5.61 million subscribers. And he has a second channel with 158,000 subscribers which is like the Keemstar channel, which confuses me because he's literally been banned from YouTube and did a workaround through a network to get the Drama Alert channel. But my confusion got clarified later as Keem seems to have been granted rights to YouTube channels now because the issue that came to ban him has just was a really long time ago. That's to what I can understand the reason why they gave it back to him. So to my understanding, because the thing is with Keemstar is like, this was so far before my time because this man is just old. I'm 22 and I'm apparently Keemstar's age dating demographic, but I know that if he ever finds this, he's going to tweet that I'm ugly and he doesn't want me to date me or something as if that is a measurement of anything of worthwhile. I don't want to date Keemstar either. I feel like that's, you know, but he'll say something about chasing clout and how my value doesn't matter because of some sort of social economic class difference that he deems to be reflective of my morals, experiences, and intellect. But that's besides the point. To my understanding, Keemstar started streaming quite a bit, mostly with games like Call of Duty, and was in a community of essentially people who were like streaming Call of Duty and related content and were trolling, and then these compilations would end up on YouTube. So he was already known to be someone who harassed other creators and got picked up by a company called Machinima. Uh, they were YouTube networks that existed uh, early on, and people have had a lot of issues with them. They were very uh, predatory in nature for how they picked up uh, different creators. First video was somebody had uploaded Keemstar on Call of Duty, on the Call of Duty lobby, uh, under the name DJ Keemstar. So Keemstar was actually a wedding DJ <laughs> before, which was really interesting. Then in 2012, Keemstar started what would later become one of the first drama alert channels, which was designed to show internet news under the channel named XDJ Keemstar. This channel was to get banned quite a few times. He kept trying to make other channels. He made a podcast with somebody and then he started reporting on Call of Duty news a lot of the time. But then essentially, like to make things really short, I will link like actual documentaries like on Keemstar down below if you want like context on it. But Keemstar had essentially promoted like a YouTube pyramid scheme through this other network. And that had actually gotten him banned from the platform because people were paying into this scam. And then it was a Ponzi scheme. Anyway, so then Keemster accidentally promoted this, allegedly not knowing that it was a scheme, which I can kind of believe it because early internet stuff like that was very confusing and then got banned. And then every time he tried to, he was just essentially ban evading for years and years, just constantly trying to dodge people. And then eventually through YouTube network was a lot of the drama alert channel. So what is the drama alert channel? Drama alert, if you don't know, is supposedly a YouTube news channel. I'm your host, Killer Keemstar. Let's go right into the news. I'm hitting it with these for a reason that we'll get into soon. It's supposed to report on the drama on YouTube through Keemstar, who also runs the Drama Alert Twitter and the other channels that I mentioned before. Drama Alert is supposed to pose as this unbiased news source in the same way that like a mainstream media news source would be, except it's just internet news. So you can tell by like the the background and the the screen and like the green screen usage and that kind of stuff. It's supposed to look like a newsroom. We're gonna incorporate rhetoric right away when we're talking about this concept of this bias free news and fact delivery through the Drama Alert channel. So given that the philosophy of channels like this is this unbiased nature, I actually personally think that that is incredibly misguided in the delivery of internet news. We're going to use something called critical textual analysis 
or critical discourse analysis, but it's a bit of both because you script your videos as text and textual textuality is not necessarily bound to just written work. We're going to look at them as text and YouTube video as one just because by definition, YouTube videos are multimodal text forms, meaning that several pieces of media are intersecting in each other to make the content. So regardless of the production, productions of these works, the person writing and delivering the message acts as a filter where certain aspects are going to be admitted or applied or interpreted. Even mainstream media news has bias presented, even despite the fact of these productions being complex and often having many professionals at hand to filter through bias and to different perspectives and content. And often there are journalism integrity laws that are there that people like Daniel King do not have to follow on YouTube. There's just the only stuff that they really have to follow are intense slander and libel laws. And even then those are very loose, especially on the YouTube platform. This is demonstrated, like this can be demonstrated through like the people who have tried to sue Keemstar in the past, for example, for like things like slander and libel, and have been unable to because of the nature of the content. And even with the many people who have tried to remove bias in mainstream media, they are unsuccessful as well. So you can imagine that one gnome looking man who screams and eats popcorn and got dropped by G Fuel might not necessarily be the best at filtering out these things himself. He does have a team, but Daniel Keem, as you can see by his personality, which we'll get into a bit more later in the nature of his fame and trolling nature, probably wouldn't be somebody, and this is all uh, speculation, by the way, to hire people that would necessarily tend to go against his opinions and directions. I'm 39, she's 20, so he came at me like, call me a creep or whatever. And he was like saying that I had like a little dick, my dick didn't work and shit, and he got in trouble with YouTube. Damn. So he's on the fence. You see, yeah. what do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> no, what's even worse is every time that dude. <laughs> Yo, he legitimately went on his show, this motherfucker went on his show, he said it was on antidepressants, and the side effects were that he didn't have feeling in his dick. So projection he was trying to put that on me so that would also allow for more of daniel king's personal bias and delivery structure and scripting to come through but i think that there's a reason why he tries to position drama alert as this like by unbiased news source despite the fact that it obviously is because this idea of factual and bias-free reporting often is given as a ruse or an out of out towards criticism, as in a way to be able to get away from it. People consider the only thing that you can truly critique often online as opinions. And because opinions can be argued, critiqued, or looked into while they deem factual information not, despite the fact that online discourse in itself is personal lives and stuff is all opinion-based, and perceptions are incorporated through audience interaction as well as people's social medias. Social media posts, like in the nature of like someone posting on Twitter, are not like researched and sourced. And, you know, they're just a person's opinion, viewpoints or whatever being put out online with. You're not interacting with like researched source material. You have to make the interpretations essentially to deliver it. Unless Keemstar would just literally sit there and just read tweets all the time and not say anything about it. If not, there has to be an interpretation because it's not statistics and database a lot of the time. So this separation, I argue, is actually entirely intentional on the part of Daniel Keem, like the in separation of the individual and the drama alert entity, which he does a lot, and he especially did in the past. Um, IDUPS talks about this in his content cop on Keemstar a lot. And he's done this several times in his career to deflect criticism, such as racist comments, den denouncing SA, mental health, etc., literally doxing people, and most famously causing a streamer to get swatted, like, revealing Pyrocynical's face. He's also called somebody a pedo, which we'll get into later. There's a lot of different instances where Keemstar will kind of dodge based on this like reporting nature or trying to create this like concept of, oh, I'm just using the sources I was given, despite the fact that it, the issue is typically from his interpretation, not the existence of these sources in the first place. Throughout the years, Keemstar has worked on several projects, including Minecraft Mondays, different events, and he's also done, like, he played Fortnite and stuff like that. He's done several podcasts, most recently ending Mom's Basement with Face Banks. Uh, Keem has also been tried to involve himself in like boxing events and multiple social media channels and networks, etc. So Keem stars on lots of stuff. I would kind of consider him a part, almost like the cockroach of YouTube to some extent, because time after time after time he was banned, channels were deleted, people tried to get rid of him, people tried to sue him. And there's just been so many instances of people coming for Keemstar and despite it all, has just been able to progress. Realizing YouTube's potential, Keem created a drama channel to cover some of the beef going on in the gaming community. The videos were extremely successful, but unfortunately the channel got taken down. And when he made several new ones, those got taken down as well. This was because Keem was mass reported by others for mistakenly promoting a scam. So anyway, you got banned for promoting this scam. Yeah, pretty much. 
And I tried to explain it and, you know, I had some high power YouTubers talking to people and they just weren't listening. And because of who I was and the trolling and stuff like that, there were a lot of people constantly notifying YouTube, here's his new channel, take it down. Luckily though, Daniel found a surprising loophole. He could have someone else own the Drama Alert channel and just work as a contractor. And they went to YouTube and figured out a solution where I could just be on the channel, but technically not own it because it's not my name. And mm. so that's how we did it for a while. But in 2014, Drum Alert hit 100,000 subs mm -hmm. four times, got shut down. Are you serious? Had to make a new one, 100,000 wow. subs. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. So he worked as a hired talent until 2017 when he was finally given the right to own his channel. So he did and was able to continue being a creator on YouTube. I get This, I think, a lot of it comes from that attempted separation between the news entity and the individual along with the type of content that he reports on because he reports on youtube not having to uphold to journalistic standards in the way that bigger networks and journalists do so we're gonna get into part two which is specifically the feud history um, i want to preface that the word feud is not necessarily appropriate in a lot of these circumstances just because i want to kind of all put it into one box and for the sake of legality this is all alleged information there's also one side or the other, I've kind of tried to find the general span of everything, but it's kind of difficult because a lot of these get deleted and a lot of this was a long time ago. But given Keemstar's history that we just went through, it should not come to surprise to anyone that he has uh, pissed a lot of people off. I have a list of people that I could just name off the top of my head, and I'm sure I'm going to miss some. But are y'all ready? This is a hefty list. So people that he's feuded with. This does not necessarily mean that he is still not friends with them. Some of these people he has reconciled with. That doesn't mean that he never feuded with them in the first place, despite the fact that Keemstar would imagine would try to spin that. Here's my list. Pyrocynical, Leafy, Ethan Klein, Hassan Piker, Trisha Paytas, Etika, Tony, aka Glory and Gold. That is the streamer I just talked about. Amaranth, Pokimane, Smiles for YouTube, Gabby Hanna, Hila, uh, Hila Klein, AB Starkilla, and his wife Lena. Ian and his wife, Ian, like Idoves, and his wife Anissa, Deaf Noodles, Fuzzy Tube, Tabuscus, Jesse Smiles, Jen Dent, Bashiverse, or Basher, uh, Total Biscuit, Just Destiny, and Grade A under it. Again, this is not saying that Keemstar is necessarily still fighting with a lot of these people. Let's say, like, Fuzzy Tube and Leafy, for example, he has befriended over the years. So, I don't care what you think about some of these people in retrospect. Two things can be right at the same time. Uh, Keemstar could have been horrible to some of these people and caused these views to some of these people while the fact that these people are poor themselves. So like somebody could be mean to Keem and Keem could escalate it far beyond any sense or reason or Keemstar could have started it. And just because they happened to be maybe a bad person in some circumstance, that does not dissolve Keemstar's actions. He's not doing a lot of these things or any of these things for like a noble cause. There's always seems to be some sort of like career defining moment or purpose of uplifting himself in these ways. He's not doing it as like a trying to save YouTube nature. I, I'm just waiting for some of you are going to start making comments. You don't like Ethan Klein or Deaf Noodles or that, you know, some people that he's feuded with are no longer mad at him. That is missing the point entirely. I listed all these creators because of getting nitty gritty into the research process to just show the sheer amount of people people over the years that Keemstar has feuded with. If I'm going to count, right, we've got, I have 25 people on that list. I've categorized the general nature of these feuds. So I'm not going to get into every single little one of them because we would be here for hours upon hours. And I've already watched hours of content on this and I still can't find the nature of every single one of these in great detail. But there are three components. There's doxing, denouncing, and repeated alleged harassment. Starting with doxing, this includes people like Smiles for YouTube and Pyrocynical, uh, with these instances, there are two bizarre components that come out of Daniel Keem in these circumstances. There is the threatening persona while simultaneously playing ignorant. So what he'll do, like Keem star in this circumstance, is he'll push, he'll push, he'll push. He'll do things like he'll dox people like Smiles for YouTube on stream. Topic of fire, it should be noted that Keemstar regularly takes risks and or plays with fire. That usually works in his favor, but also regularly gets burned. And this was one of those situations, as on the surface, this entire drama is already confusing enough. But when further looked into, it becomes quite a jumbled mess, with several parties working for their own gains and practically only Keemstar landing on top. Until now. And that's because Smile for YouTube, Basher's associate, or the person that was in the call when the leaked Skype audio of his ex-girlfriend was exposed to him. Because in 2016, a little less than a year after the video dropped, he leaked a Skype call between him, Basher, and Keem that puts a new perspective on all this because Smile for YouTube didn't always go under that alias. 
In 2010, he was known as 101 SWAT 101, and he's exactly the kind of person you would expect someone with that name to have. And unbeknownst to Keem, back in 2010, he allegedly also made trolling videos with him, and that's why he had FAG reuploads on his channel. But of course, with five years passing it and all the people that Keem has met, he didn't recognize him at all. But there was some suspicion that was successfully diverted by a lie on Smile's side, as he did not want his cover blown. Hey, uh, are you a big time fan of mine? Because I searched you on YouTube and I saw like FAG re uploaded videos. Uh, FAG uploaded videos? Re uploaded videos, like my old trolling videos? Oh, I'm not sure, man. I, I, well, fuck, years back I was watching your videos. Years back. Yeah, I searched Smile for YouTube on, or on YouTube, and there's a channel, and it's got like re uploaded videos of my old stuff. Oh, no, that wouldn't be me. Uh, I'm Smile for YouTube Gaming. Oh, okay. Well, that's a weird coincidence. That is a weird coincidence. <laughs> that is actually really fucked. But before we get into the meat of this call, there is also a website that docks Clara and several other content creators' residents posted by an anonymous source. A dox that Keemstar clearly knew about and spread it anyway. Don't worry. Are you going to report on the uh, website? Um, well, I haven't really looked at the website. Like, I just, You're going to like it. Like Oh, you're gonna like it. <laughs> oh, you're gonna like Especially it. Especially scrolling really down, bad. it even shows her bedroom window and everything. Like, it's some creeper, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how the fuck they got this stuff, but it's creepy. It was definitely another YouTube partner out there that's I'm doing this. I'm gonna tweet it out. I'm gonna say, oh my god, have you seen this? <laughs> oh my god. And then proceed to be like, well, I'm not the one who sent the SWAT team to his house despite the fact of completely understanding the nature of exposing people online as well as being someone who has laughed and talked about doxing in the past and has understood that swatting is something that happens as a result it's as if you found a dog that tends to bite people and then you got it really angry and then you released it on someone and you're like i'm not the one that the i'm not the one that bit him it was the dog you know what i mean like there's just like this weird forceful push and then the step back of just trying to heed himself of all responsibility and he does this in many different aspects and different feuds he will push 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 and and then just separate himself of all responsibility this happened with etika as well i'm not here though to say that like keemstar made etika take his own life i'm not going to go to that extent i don't think that's necessarily the right thing to do let's see with pyrocynical keemstar was criticized for releasing his pictures Despite the fact that Pyrocynical had it on a private Facebook page and Keemstar says because it existed on the internet somewhere, that means it was made for everybody. So after I criticized Keemstar, Twitter pretty much devolved into a battleground. The fallen god of Olympus would randomly, with little to no context, start attacking me and posting private, I repeat, private, pictures of me on his Twitter. Grey Day Under A was especially annoyed by this, as he saw it to be a complete invasion of my privacy, and he had this to say. Me and Paro Cynical share a very special bond indeed, man. Not only are we both British and both have annoying voices, we are both part of a very small percentage of YouTubers who choose not to show their face. We both value our privacy, and people should respect that. But for someone like Keemstar to go and show Paro's face on Twitter, after Paro's made the decision not to, is a scumbag thing to do. And I have zero fucking respect for Keemstar for doing that. Biggest cunt on this side, man. Fuck Keemstar. I'm never unfair to people. I'm fair to everyone. I'm honest with everyone. And I totally agree with Great. This was a complete invasion of my privacy. Fortunately, I look a lot less like an extra from Orange is the New Black nowadays, but still, Keemstar invaded my privacy. Some of these pictures never left my personal Facebook page. So I was then forced to close my Facebook account, knowing that people like Keemstar were willing to go so low as to leak private pictures of individuals just to get back at them. I will admit, I've posted pictures of Keemstar myself, but the pictures I've taken are all from his Twitter page or his Drama Alert channel. Pictures he willingly uploaded for his audience to see. Meanwhile, he's using private pictures of me that I didn't upload for the public to see. And a couple hours later, Keemstar realized that it was bad to post private pictures of people online, and he took to stream saying how they were already on the internet anyway, so it was totally justified. Then Pyro started telling everyone that he was gonna get my Twitter taken down. Because I showed his face, but his face is like public. You see, Keemstar, a couple months ago, my face wasn't really that public, but do you think at any point that you constantly posting the same pictures of me over and over on a Twitter account with nearly a million followers for months on end, do you think to some extent that might have contributed to my face now being public? Not to mention the amount of people uploading pyro face reveal videos on YouTube, literally saying you were the person to leak my face. Now, Pyro Cynical actually posted a picture with one of the pyro characters licking or kissing Keemstar. Now, we don't know if this was the first tweet that Pyro actually tweeted out to spark this war. 
Uh, someone claimed that Pirates of the Goal had a picture of his face in a video that had like something like a million views on it. I never heard about that. Pirates of the Goal never mentioned that in his video about Keemstar. If that is true, it still was a picture that Keem dug up from the Facebook page. So he still went into a deep area to pull it out and wasn't claiming that at the time. So again, two things can can be right at once in this circumstance. Smiles for YouTube, he actually leaked his personal and family's information. When Smiles for YouTube was swatted, Keemstar allegedly pushed all of his responsibility away. Now, if I remember, if this was Smiles for YouTube, I'm not sure because again, I got so muddied after a while. There were so many people they were talking about. I re- If I recall correctly, he was Smiles for YouTube. I mean, he had swatted somebody else in the past. I might be getting that mixed up. However, this does not give Keemstar the right to dox somebody. YouTube should not be a place for like vigilante justice because swatting has resulted in people's lives being lost. And Keemstar is hardly the figure of mor- of um, morality and the person who should create the direction of the way that people should be treated. So I don't give a shit if this if this Smiles for YouTube person maybe would have been a bad person. That doesn't matter because there is no circumstance where you should be leaking someone's and their family's personal information. Because even if you want to talk about Smiles for YouTube, if you're going to try to go down that line, he talked about his family. I don't think his mom was on YouTube swatting people, okay? Like there's a there's a point where things are way too far and people will try to pick opposing actions to uh, to almost dissolve Keemstar. That's like the main utility of like, or the main tool that a lot of these other channels and these people who support Keemstar will use. But you can't, that doesn't make the other actions go away. It doesn't make the precedent go away. And that doesn't negate the fact that Keemstar typically has more wealth and power and audience to leverage over somebody else. So if we get into like the actual like denouncing categories and nature of a feud that Keemstar has, it doesn't necessarily reflect the gravity of these situations. Typically, a lot of these revolve around, interestingly enough, the relationship between like women and abuse online, what they face as public figures a lot of the time. Uh, Examples are Keemstar says Jesse Smiles was not assaulted by Curtis Lepore because they were dating. Uh, and Keemstar thought that Curtis Lepore was a nice guy, so that's no way that that happened. He also denounces harassment that Pokimane gets from men online, saying that like she definitely kind of playing into sometimes the Leafy's like Pokimane has a secret boyfriend stuff. Just because a woman is rich and a lot of people like thirst over her online doesn't mean again does not dissolve the death threats like this is the thing is like people will pick on these minuscule actions to uh, dissolve stuff that's like way above the brutality of these other action or the impact this other action has and it's very strange that's something that i find online a lot of the time and i've never understood how people are able to make that sound like a reasonable argument that makes sense. And he also called Amaranth's husband a good businessman for controlling and abusing his wife into working constantly to support them. Keemster is purposefully contrarian for attention. He th- gathers a group of supporters to substantiate his claims through the process that I just described. This idea of negating harmful actions at a lower level through Keemstar's systems of support and ignorance. So essentially, let's say like Keemstar will get slapped and then he'll burn down their house. This is hypothetical, by the way. I'm just saying like as if you were to slap somebody and as a revenge, they burn down your house. But Keemstar say, well, this bad thing happened to me. So thus, I have rights to go full reign on whatever I want. That is kind of the circumstances where Keemstar will come in. Somebody will co- He says this verbatim against Pyrocynical. He said... If you come for me, I have files on files on you to come back with. And when there isn't anything to attack, he resorts to just fabricating stuff on the spot. Oh, and Pyro, do you remember those YouTubers that you used to be friends with before he blew up and like fucked them off? You know how they've been contacting me saying that you've been dating some like 14 year old French girl and shit? Just please swing at me. If you're gonna swing at me, swing at me, dude. Let me know because I got a fucking files on top of files to swing back at. I even responded extremely calmly to his Twitter videos, which were basically slandering me. But of course, Hell hath no fury. 
like a gnome scorned. Keemstar made over 15 Twitter videos in a single evening, varying from attacking me to attacking my own followers. And after analysing all the Twitter videos and listening to Keemstar basically foaming from the mouth for about 45 minutes, he made two points about the video. Firstly, I never got his permission or his consent to make this video on him. You could contact me with that at any time. You didn't hit me up privately. You didn't share this opinion with me. No, you make a fucking video criticizing me. All right, bro, you're a fake piece of shit. And if you fucking swing at me, I'm gonna swing much harder back. All right, so firstly, what the fuck is with the overreaction in the ending? And if you fucking swing at me, I'm gonna swing much harder back. I simply suggested you add a disclaimer to avoid confused viewers to blindly hate on someone's channel. And now you're acting like I want to massacre your entire family and sell their limbs on Craigslist. A total overreaction. And secondly, do I really need your consent or blessing to make a video on you? Of course I fucking don't. You're a YouTuber, just like the rest of us, and you're open to criticism. Don't think that just because you report the news that you're higher than anyone else and immune to criticism, because you're not. Come at me, I'm gonna fucking smack you. Another point came- Like he literally says, like, come at me at like a 10, I'll come at you with a 100. Right? Why? How would does that absolve you in any way? It has never made any sense to me. Keemstar also does not believe in a mental health issues as a concept. He says that he believes in order to cure depression, all you need is a couple of beers. Keemstar did this a lot with Etika, in particular this concept of denouncing mental health. And while interviewing Etika on uh, towards the end of his life, calls him crazy and belittles him. Only once Etika passes away does Keemstar claim they were friends. This comes to the response of criticism of his treatment of Etika. How prevalent mental disease is and how seriously it can affect someone. Keeping this in mind, Keem had the perspective that Etika, who was having many mental breakdowns in 2018 and 19, was perhaps faking it for views. We know for a fact that he wasn't, but this is to explain Keem's mindset. To that is where Keemstar did such things, such as tweet out the mental hospital that Etika was staying at. Some other examples of Keemstar's other perspectives on mental health can be well encapsulated by this tweet he made toward Chris Reagan, a content creator going through his own mental health issues in the same time period. Where Keem says, Why is everyone claiming that they are suffering from mental health issues? Life is not meant to be happy 24 7. If it was, you would not know what happy is. You wouldn't be able to compare it to anything. So some of you might be sick, fine, but most of you are just babies or lying. Or a tweet made in 2019 saying, The drug companies invent all these illnesses so they could sell drugs to morons. Social anxiety is 100% a fake invented illness so they can sell you drugs and make millions. Stop being weak. Society is literally going to die if you keep this bullshit up. Not much changed on his perspective on mental health, when on May 19th, 2019, at the peak of a mental breakdown and fresh out of the mental hospital, Keemstar interviewed Etika on his show. Why not? Why do you fear death? Well, that's what I'm saying. That's, uh, it's, it's, it's scary, because if you really think about it, then why live? Just yeah. jump off a cliff. If, if it's just a simulation, who cares? Movie Bird Box? Uh, no, I haven't watched that movie. I just, it, I got horrible reviews. You know what happens in the movie Bird Box? Go ahead, explain it. Humanity confronts the fifth dimensional being. Keemstar, you're fucking sitting there, right? You're asking yourself, oh, let me go outside today. And yeah. guess what happens when you open the front door? You see, you see eternity swinging on maybe your playground swing set, or you see eternity sitting in your car. You see something that doesn't belong, something more powerful than you. A lot of human beings can't handle something outside of their understanding. And that's why they fear what they don't understand. Now in the movie Bird Box, rather than humanity killing what they don't understand, what they don't understand kills humanity. More select clips of Keemstar's interview are consistently recycled through the internet. As to why these clips are constantly cycled is because a month later, Etika was found dead by his own hands. There was much sadness, confusion, disbelief, and hatred going around the community throughout this time. Some that Keemstar was not exempt from as he received much hatred for his prior interview with Etika. Which was not only proven, it's not only proven like Keemstar's ability to disprove anything, but also shows that he is willing to retract for his own good look, not on his actual consistent opinions. Because I can understand that Etika's family says that Keemstar was not responsible for Etika's passing. That's totally fine. And I agree with that. But at the same time, it doesn't negate Keemstar publicly humiliating Etika. Even if Etika says that, oh, he liked Keemstar or whatever, that's respectable. That doesn't mean that Keemstar is not setting a precedent that people with mental health should be mocked and that the nature of mental health disorders is something that is a joke that should be laughed at and you could push on these people because it is just some sort of twisted delusion that they've placed themselves in. 
perhaps for some sort of compliance or convenience that they just don't feel like they want to do anything. Yeah. Just jump off a cliff. If, if it's just a simulation, who cares? Uh, just you guys don't understand. Was this a publicity stunt? And I just want to mourn my friend. So please stop making me defend myself. We're all God. We only became close and, you know, had conversations. What a f that job. <laughs> Um, you know, in length, privately, about r really life in general. Crazy. And, and YouTube and Twitter and all that stuff. Only kind of around the time that we did the interview. Um, before then, before the interview, and after. Sneeko said that a lot. He said, he said that about me, actually. He said that I just look like somebody who complains and never does anything with their life and just is a victim to everything. Despite not knowing me, not knowing what I've been through and not knowing what I've done. Just making this assumption based on the fact that I'm acknowledging that people have mental health issues and also not mentioning if I have any of my own in any of these videos. That's what's so strange to me. Two things can be right at once. Like I mentioned, Keemster could be perpetuating a harmful message and commodifying it and commodifying Etika's illness, but he could also not have been the sole cause for Etika's passing. Those two things can exist. That was the what I feel like is the main mistake that Ethan Klein had in his content nukes against Keemstar was also this concept of, negating that two things can possibly exist at the same time just because he treated etika poorly and commodified the illness which could have been a, con a contributor you're not sure if it was right and it can exist outside of it being the reason that that etika ended his life in the way that he did if we go into like this like repeated alleged harassment nature that keemstar has i've noticed this tends to come from a sense of competition when a creator has pose a risk to Keemstar's place in a certain community, typically in the commentary community. This is prevalent with people like Pyrocynical and Ethan Klein when they commented on, uh, Pyrocynical commented on Keemstar uh, when he was reporting on like the Tobuscus allegations years ago. Again, Tobuscus has proven to be a bad person. He's, he's a weird right-wing grifter conspiracy theorist, but that doesn't make the fact that Keemstar ran on these unsubstantiated claims as if they were fact and didn't properly source things or retract things when needed or qualify anything. Again, two things can exist at once. And with Ethan Klein, he uh, um, Keemstar has demonstrated being anti-Semitic and has been very cruel and has made comments about people not really like, he punches down a lot. He did that with AB Starkiller and his wife Lena on Twitter, like in 2020, if I remember correctly. There's just a lot of these actions that Keemstar does where he'll swing like crazy. And then the second that, if he makes the wrong hit and then he'll kind of act as if it was an accident, despite the fact that he has stated having malicious intent and has stated that he comes to end careers, he threatened that to items. And you can see that in the DMs from the content cop video. Since Keemstar doesn't mind showing Tumblr posts and Twitter DMs as news, he shouldn't mind me showing our private Twitter conversation where he says he'd ruin my career if he didn't love my content. Wow, you love my content, Keemstar. Maybe we are friends. Maybe we are friends after all. If they drive criticism to him as a form of responsibility, that is when he'll become the most frustrated. Keemstar thinks that just because he'll apologize once for an instant action that he then has rights to belittle and shit on somebody more down the line if they don't accept his apology. Here is a news flash. okay? Let's get right into the news, you know what I mean? Just because you apologize doesn't mean people have to accept it and that doesn't mean you have the right to keep being rude to them and horrible to them and essentially just causing the very actions that you apologize for again because you feel slated that they didn't accept your apology this is an example with someone who recently passed away called tony who was a streamer called glory and gold he played runescape and keemstar said uh, reported on drama alert that he looked like somebody who was an alleged pedo and reported that as if it was fact because an intern had the two pictures and said they looked the same. Now, Keemstar did apologize for that bad reporting and said something about giving him money or something. Then proceeds to not necessarily backtrack, but be really horrible to Tony later down the line, causing for that same harassment to come back that he had brought forth originally. People, you've when you've implanted something as an as detrimental as an allegation like that they harm children 
you have to understand that if you come for that person again, you can reignite the belief in that initial allegation. Things are not as simple as I can take back whatever I want and it will wipe it from everybody's minds. And that's something that Keemstar pleads ignorance to constantly. This is also despite Keemstar being someone who holds a lot of grudges. Like every time he talks about Ethan Klein ever, he brings up the fact that he had uh, Ethan Klein had him on the H3 podcast like five years ago. And someone commented that they like, oh, why did you bring on Keemstar? And then Ethan Klein replied with like, well, we don't like him either. And it's like, I'm not here to like whack off Ethan Klein. Literally, like if because I kept watching like interviews and different things, uh, different videos. He just brings it up all the time. Like, it's so strange. He still brings it up all the time. It doesn't matter who it is. If he was talking about that with Leafy, he was talking about that with uh, Glory and Gold, talking about that with Amaranth, whatever. It's like, it's just how he always brings it up. And it was five years ago. But then people can be mad about way more harmful things that they did to him. And he's like, well, I apologize. It doesn't matter. It's, it's a lot of like, you know, for me, for it's fine if I do it, but not you kind of thing. If we get to part three, which is the recent actions and drama alert Twitter, the inspiration for this particular video, like I had mentioned before, came from Keemstar's tweets regarding Amaranth when uh, she was married. Because Keemstar stated that despite the blatant abuse that was quite literally caught on live stream that Amaranth faced, he was a good businessman for running such an operation that made them so much money. This operation that made them so much money was exploiting his wife's body, making her work constantly, making her lie about their relationship, and emotionally harming her and abusing her. That, that, that concept made me speechless. I don't know, understand how you can hedge on any of that. And was and was kind of giving like the incel energy of being mad that she lied about the relationship despite the fact that it was the man in the relationship that was insisting upon this because keemstar just in general gives frustrated boomer energy which i suppose makes sense because he's like six months away from being able to cash in his 401k but <laughs> there's an example of this that he states all kids do these days is scroll on TikTok for hours while claiming that like TikTok's like the downfall of mainstream media platforms. Not as if mainstream media has low representation, no immediate feedback loop like social media has, which is what by that I mean like you can request videos and people will make them. Way more niche topics can be talked about. Way more interest can be reflected. Uh, mainstream media has historically been overpriced and highly commercialized. And sometimes like streaming services just don't have what you want. And there's a lot of like regional restrictions. So for example, I can't get Hulu Plus. So I can't get stuff like I can't watch things like 90 Day Fiance or whatever. So I'll often watch like recaps on YouTube. You know, there's like those types of interests that cannot be reflected because of these parameters. There are so many examples of how mainstream media shot themselves in the foot. But Keemstar instead wants to be a boomer, which is against his own dating base because he's weird dates 20 year olds where he's mad that they use tiktok or whatever my one of my favorite keemstar tweets of all time this is just straight bars he says gen z is 86 percent lgbtq if i had to guess we love a qualifier that exists solely for the sake of of negating backlash because if he didn't want that perception to be out there and that plaus and to create any sort of plausible deniability he just wouldn't have said it especially on this like drama alert platform that is supposed to be reporting on the nature of the internet. And again, Keemstar has claimed that the drama alert Twitter is supposed to be a more personal place, but you're utilizing the ethos of drama alert, which is, a, that's, that's as if somebody just took the NBC, like how high you've put yourself on this internet pedestal, Keem. You're, that's as if like the NBC Twitter just went off the rails and some person and then some intern just took it and started reflecting their own opinions. You can't have your news platform have a personal side. It doesn't make sense. That's against the own unbiased nature. That's just so strange. Use get a, get a different Twitter. Get like the Daniel Keem Twitter to harass people with. It's just so strange. Because I just wanted to double check this too because Keemstar... So the, the, it's not necessarily like a, it's not called like drama alert on the Twitter page, right? But I'll show you, it, I'll do it on the screen as well. But if you look, he has the drama alert banner there, right? And he, he tweets hashtag drama alert all the time and he promotes all the drama alert videos with it. So I don't know. It's just, there's, there's very little separation that exists there. And you're running off the back of this like reputation of this unbiased news network that no one thinks is unbiased and like. People have really stopped falling for it, which you could see by the views on Drama Alert tanking. Going back to the Gen Z is 86% LGBTQ tweet, I thought that was funny. 
And I quote tweeted that one with seven words that could sum up the entirety of Keemstar's reputation, the video and all the claims I've made regarding the way that Keemstar depicts his news. I'm not saying the claims are this nature, but I'm saying the way that Keemstar depicts news, right? The whole nature of Keemstar can really be summed up in these seven words, which is source, I made it the fuck up. Keemstar's overall internet presence can really be boiled down in three ways. Contrarianism for attention, covering all bases of opinion for the sake of being able to select a stance to be right on to retweet later, and leveraging his platform as a weapon based on the stance that he has selected. Now, to simplify that further, the best way that I can explain this is if anybody remembers like multiple choice tests or Scantron sheets, Keemstar lives his life on the basis of if I color in all of the dots, I will get 100% on my exam because one of them has to be right. He thinks that like the machine will scan them and only picks up the right answer. So if you put in all of the answers, one of them's got to be the answer. So there's two problems with that. People are not Scantron sheets. And even if the even if we were, that's not how they work. Now, Mika, source yourself. I will. He does this example. He does it with Shane Dawson a lot. Um, on one hand, he tweets in support of Shane Dawson, but typically only in peak drama time, just so that he can get a little bit of his contrarian foot in the door and get attention, but then proceeds to incorporate things like pretty scathing polls on Shane to, I would assume, per, um, in, in trance or bring forward people who don't like Shane and people who are not aware of Keemstar so they can kind of, you know, feel like their opinions can be included in a drama alert episode and understand that, like, Keemstar is attempting to take in all bases of opinion, but then kind of just uses it as like a gotcha moment if he can find any quote unquote positive thing that Shane Dawson has done, which typically that only means like positive is because he still makes money or something. He just does this to appear unbiased, but then weapons weaponizes it later with his bias. It is very weird. Keemstar has also randomly become vocal about age gap relationships. Uh, this just this is just self-serving entirely given his random desire to only date like 20 year olds. He has another point where the water's muddy because Keemstar claims that the drama alert Twitter is a place where he can become personal. And like I said, it is at Keemstar now and everything. But again, it has a drama alert banner, tweets drama alert videos, talks about drama alert all the time. It's just so strange because the weakened premise and largely fallacious nature allows for him to take advantage and attack people based on the holes in his own arguments. It's as if he takes, again, that kind of Scantron sheet ideology of when he has the right answer because he put in all of the answers. And if you point out the holes in his argument, he almost turns them into quicksand and says that you're obsessed with him, that he did have a right point. Here it is and proves it. Then he gets his little laggies to come in, his little besties or whatever to come in and come for you and be like well that opinion's there and bring retweets and then dig up your past and weaponize it against you whether actually relevant or not it's just a lot of manipulation a lot of aggressive action a lot of impulsivity and just a lot of the most vicious places on the internet which kind of makes sense given his where he came from from the call of duty and the streams and the band evading and the machinima relation and all that kind of stuff. So bring forth like the nature of Keemstar, the history of Keemstar, the use of social media platforms, the advantages that he's had, the wealth that he's obtained. It is all boiled down into this person that we know today as Killer Keemstar who gets right into the news. To conclude, I have been slowly researching this video for a little over a month. So I hope this was good to at least some of you. Uh, more videos coming soon. Please suggest any content down below. There's also an email there if you would like to make more long form suggestions. Uh, links, sources, ways to support the channel such as the Amazon wishlist and the Patreon are all down below. Thank you again to my patrons. Y'all are amazing. It's been really fun making content and I end my semester about halfway through December. So I think for the month of December, I'll be able to put out a really good amount of content for you guys for like the Christmas season or whatever. And uh, I hope you guys have a good day and I'll see you when I see you. Bye. Hey, what's up you guys? Yes, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna be talking about my cat.